may seem surprising though that the floods in Kerala had been a Nietzsche's product and it is Nietzsche's fury, but uh, the fact is otherwise. Uh, Kerala's flood had been a completely man-made event uh, and this is largely because uh, it is the callousness of uh, the bureaucracy of that place. Uh, maybe the policy makers can also go on to be blamed for that, which has caused uh, the disaster of uh, such a magnanimity. Rivers are always going to be prone to inundation. A river has a natural tendency to inundate. But such inundation can go on to get converted into floods if it is going to be made into a calamity of sorts or a hazard of sorts. That means if it is that the inundation by the rivers causes so much amount of harm to the people and so much amount of harm to the place eh, and livelihood of the people that it is actually seen in a negative form. In Kerala, the rivers are adapted to moving on a swift land. Eh. Kerala is not known for floods eh, and it should not be known for floods at all. Of course, eh, the amount of inundation can go on to be high, but eh, this time the conditions had been very, very different. To begin with, eh, Kerala had a lot of rivers, 40 rivers running down the western Ghat and draining themselves into Arabian Sea. So something must have gone terribly wrong with the hydrological stabilization of that place eh, that allows the river to inundate eh, and to be running in such type of a fury as to get inundated in no amount of a time and attain a bank full condition, meaning that eh, they go on to be full to the brim on their banks. Eh. Now, Kerala rivers originate from the Western Ghats. Eh? They have a very short course. Eh? They move down the slope of the Western Ghats. Eh? And eh, the swiftness with which the rivers going to move is eh, pretty high. Now, the catch point here is that eh, the catchment area of most of these rivers is going to be very, very small. The amount of water that they're going to be carrying is going to be short, eh? but because the catchment area is going to be so small and eh, all the water drains down the western heart, draining itself into Arabian Sea, the total amount of a time that the rivers take to swell is going to be very, very, very small, very little. So this time also it went on to happen. That is, eh, the rivers took eh, a very low amount of a time for the purpose of eh, swelling themselves. This time also it happened the same thing, that is the rivers flowing down the western Ghats, eh, draining themselves towards the Arabian Sea, moving in a swift course, eh, in a short course. Eh, the amount of water that they received was very, very high and they took no time in uh, getting themselves eh, taking their, getting themselves inundated and attaining a bank full condition that is being full to the brim. So, this generally goes on to make a prediction of uh, the river getting flooded very difficult. It also goes on to make it difficult uh, for anyone to predict flood uh, and be prepared because the amount of a time taken is going to be very low. Now this year it was compounded by the fact that the rainfall had been really, really very, very heavy in that region. That means uh, the Total amount of rainfall that is going to be received in some amount of a time, let's say nine days of a time, eh, and during this case, eh, it was more than the double amount of rainfall in this case. Eh. So there was no way that the river could have adjusted to its channel in such a short eh, duration of time. However, this flood was not caused merely by an excessive amount of rainfall. Now, all in all, 40% of an excess rainfall in three months of time is not a factor enough to cause floods. We understand that nine days of a, a very, very heavy rainfall can go on to cause floods. Now, floods have been caused essentially because of a apathy of the people, ignorance of the people in that region, ignorance of the policy maker, apathy of the administrators in that place, or maybe you can go on to call it a inefficiency of a the people who go going to man the districts eh, where the flooding started taking place. Eh. The Kerala government should have eh, prevented this type of a flood eh, had they got some amount of a foresight. Eh. Now imagine Kerala had a good number of eh, reservoirs and a good number of dams. Eh. The basic purpose of these dams, whether it was Iduki, whether it was going to be Mulla Periyare, 
Kenwati, all of these dams, eh, they could have eh, gathered enough amount of uh, water and their purpose was so. Now, these dams were getting themselves full to the brim. Not only is it that they were getting themselves full to the brim, it was also that eh, that eh, Kerala government knew that eh, something like 2000 millimeters of rainfall is going to be predicted and that was not projected, it was predicted. And what they could have done was that they could have started releasing this water from the dams eh, slowly so that they don't go to be meeting with any type of an eventuality in this condition. What they did was that they waited for the last moment eh, and eh, they waited, waited and waited eh, and when it was already raining very heavily, they warned the people as if people would have gone somewhere else eh, and eh, when the people had no option, they couldn't have gone, eh, they released the gates. Now, they didn't go on to release the water through one gate. They didn't go on to release the water from two gates. They released the water from all the gates. Imagine Ituki Dam had not used its gate to release this water for the last 26 years of time. And all of a sudden, they release all of these gates and they release all of this water through these gates. Now, when you go on to normally build a dam, what you do is uh, that you allow the people to come close to the river. Now, this is also something that was not prevented by the Kerala government. They have allowed the people to come close to the river. And to think that uh, they allowed the river water to flow inexistently and that too during the heavy amount of a rainfall, uh, there was a, a recipe for disaster. It was a disaster waiting to happen in this case. This factor compounded the amount of a flooding. So because of this heavy rain, so the Chirutoni Dam got filled up, Kulamavi got filled up, and uh, Idduki had to accommodate uh, an extra amount of a flow from the Mulla Periyar. And uh, when uh, the water had to be released, uh, then the people were not given enough amount of a warning. And even if that they were going to be given, uh, the people, some of these people may have uh, thought that uh, it is something like a hox of sorts eh? and that eh, they had taken nature for granted. So all the gates were opened and that compounded the crisis in this case. Eh? The reservoir of course was full to the brim. There were two other factors that compounded the situation in Kerala. They are going to be nothing less than something like some 1600 quarries in Kerala and uh, all of these quarries uh, are associated with uh, some amount of a uh, deforestation. The rivers go on to be flowing through it, uh, the runoff that goes on to be flowing through it. Uh, all of this runoff uh, go on to carry a huge amount of a uh, silt uh, and that goes on to destabilize the whole of the area. So that caused uh, a good amount of landslides in that area and landslides are known to prevent uh, the slippages of water. Landslides are prevent to block the water flow and they're going to be compounding the crisis uh, even more. They're going to be carrying so much amount of uh, rubble also. So as it happened uh, that uh, deforestation took place, uh, as it happened that, uh, the, that the quarries were built up, uh, they aggravated the flow, they aggravated the runoff without actually inducing so much amount of a uh, runoff. Now, the other ha factor had been that all of those people who had been living in these regions, eh, they had no idea. And it was in the vested interest of the people who used to be managing these quarries eh, not to allow any type of an eco-sensitive eh, recommendations to be carried on at all. So, the people moved eh, close to that of the river. They started coming close and they were not prevented from coming close to the river. Now, this uh, was uh, large, this, they shouldn't have come close to the river at all because uh, some time back uh, there was a committee that was appointed, that was the Gadgil Committee, that was on Western Eco Sensitive Zone. It recommended that in Zone 1, uh, no construction had to take place. Uh, it had to be guarded very, very well, and uh, that uh, people should be prevented from coming close to any, uh, close to any type of a river regime in this case. Uh. Now, none of uh, the recommendations of the Gadgil committee was accepted in this case. Eh? Now, when you go on to throw, throw to the air such type of a recommendation that goes on to say that the floods can be prevented or such type of a calamity can be pre prevented eh? and that eh, you do go on to build a lot of constructions eh, in the eco-sensitive zone. Eh? 
what do you going to expect out of it? It is definitely going to be flooding in this place. So the floods in Kerala were not exactly going to be completely a product of a rainfall and heavy rainfall. It is not to be blamed. It was an accumulated effort of a, all the type of a mistakes that the government had been making a, one after another after another that such type of a flooding situation took place. So agreed. Now at the same time the STRF state disaster relief force was not ready or it was not equipped to handle such type of a calamity at all. They were completely caught off guarded. Now the basic purpose of a state disaster relief force is to be completely prepared whatever may be the situation and they were not equipped to handle such type of a crisis. So it was an event, it was a disaster that was all going to be waiting to take place on such a large magnitude.